believe we are live now, Wakas. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to do this. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this at least a couple more times. Sure. Um, I am going to have to switch back and forth between the videos, but but most of the time I'm going to try to keep it on you since uh, this interview really is about you. Uh, I, I just want to start off by letting people know that you uh, are one of my coaching clients and uh, you are a doctor and you can maybe tell us a little bit more about what stage you're at there and what we're going to do today is just kind of talk about a few things one is uh, what what life was like before you started with me and what some of the challenges were uh, things that you were or were not able to do then and what other programs maybe you looked at prior to coming to me or treatments um, we'll talk about your experience working through the program you know those first few to several weeks we'll also look at uh, what you did what you had to do on an ongoing basis to improve your speech and um, then we'll talk about how life is for you for you now so how does that sound sounds good, sounds good. okay so, tell us a little bit more about where you're at in your in your career um, as a doctor. Sure. Uh, well, I recently graduated medical school. Um, I finished all my USMLE exams, and uh, now I'm a doctor residency. Great. Great. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, I've worked with um, I've worked actually with a few doctors, so <laughs> it seems like that's a um, population of people that that uh, you guys work really really hard and you tend to do really well really fast because you know what you want you know that you, you need to speak well and I really enjoy working uh, working with you so let's talk about then our first question which is tell me about life before this program uh, well basically started uh, stuttering when I was about four years old and um, life the way that my stuttering went is as the years progressed the stuttering got worse um, I can remember back in high school and I used to be pretty fluent uh, I used to give presentations in my class and in front of my school and all that uh, during 12th grade my speech started to get worse uh, at that time was actually a very stressful time for all of us. We were getting ready for college and everything. And I still remember um, a couple times whenever we had a new teacher or something and they would ask how to pronounce my name, I used to get stuck really bad sometimes. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was really tough, uh, you know, not be able to say your name. Then I went on to medical school and uh, there would be really good days and then there'd be very bad days. I think at the time when we started, um, my speech was probably at its worst or very close to the worst that it has been. Um, I used to have pretty fr uh, frequent blocks. There would be times when I wouldn't be able to say a sentence even. And wow. Yeah, things were pretty rough. And then I found you because I was having a really rough day uh, speaking wise. And um, I was just online trying to search for stuff. And I went on YouTube and found one of your videos, and I contacted you. So let's talk about just a couple of things. When you say that you're having a bad day, or when you have bad days or whatever, how does, how does that make you feel? How did it make you feel physically? Well, uh, when you have frequent blocks and you're repeating a lot of words, it gives you a headache almost. It, it, it um, makes you really tired. Uh, you don't feel good. If you're having to explain things in a really hard way, you can't get your point across, it doesn't feel good. Okay. And then how does it make you feel or how did it make you feel emotionally and psychologically? Yeah. It pushes you towards the side of depression almost. I, I mean, you, you get really sad that 
normal people have no problem with this, and yet you're you're having to struggle with something as simple as talking. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, I know we 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 laugh about sometimes, but what about things like when you have to order food or coffee or something like that? How was that for you then? Yeah. So. Um, I used to have my parents and my siblings make all my calls for me. I uh, was kind of scared to go on the phone just, just because uh, you never know how the other person is going to react. Yeah. yeah so I yeah. used to make them do it, but now I'm making all my calls myself. I, I, do, a, I do everything on my own. Now, people might not understand this, but it Try to describe just briefly some of the things you would do with your face and your mouth and, and your body, uh, because looking at you now, you know people say, "Oh, well, he he doesn't have he doesn't have a problem. He he never said, or maybe he was just mild, right?" But try to describe some of the, the physical things that you would do when you were trying to push out a word. Well, l let me also say that um, I've gone into speech therapy in the past. I had one speech therapist tell me that I'm a very severe stutterer and that she sees me going into very intensive therapy later on. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, you know, you sometimes have to use these things as motivation, kind of, mm. you know, to try to get better. But um, some of the things that I used to do, uh, I used to try to force out words and I used to make, uh, you know, my eyes used to blink. It used to give the impression that I'm choking on something, kind of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that when we first started, you would you would do things, and we've all we've all done things. I used to make faces myself, so that's how come I know. And I just wanted you to explain that to people, because I'm sure that there are going to be people watching this who do some of those things. They do things with their eyes, they do things with their mouth, with their face, with their head, with their arms. Some people tap, some people roll their heads back, people close their eyes, people, your mouth shudders. I used to bite my tongue, my jaw would get so so tough that I would be, you know, I would bite my tongue until it would bleed sometimes. Wow. Um, so just to let people know that we understand, but you're uh, an example of the fact that you actually can do something about it. Yeah. Right? Okay. So let's move on then to, uh, we've talked about some of the other kinds of treatments and things that you've done, but just touching on that, you know, some people are going to watch this and they're going to think, I'm not sure if this program will work for me. You know, Michael Williams is not a uh, speech therapist. He's a Maybe he's a shyster. He's trying to get my money. <laughs> and so some people, are, they're going to be skeptical, and they should be skeptical. People should be skeptical because when you go buying programs and paying money, whether it's hundreds or thousands of dollars, you need to be skeptical. So what, what is it that caused you to say, okay, I'm willing to pay this guy X number of dollars because I believe this program is going to help? What was it that convinced you? From uh, the speech therapy that I've had in the past, um, they all pretty much taught the same thing, uh, that you had to speak slowly, that you had to calm yourself down, that you had to breathe in a certain way. Those things can work for some people. Sometimes they don't work. Um, I've also tried the delayed feedback uh, device as well. That worked for a short time as well for me, and then after a little while, I guess my brain started to get used to it, so it didn't work as well. Um, w when I was trying to search for an answer, um, I thought that why not go with someone that has had this problem in the past, that knows, you know, sort of the tricks of the trade, you know, to try to help me. So when I was watching your videos, you know, you mentioned that you also had this issue in the past, but how you made yourself better. Uh, so that, that was one of the biggest reasons for me why I why I chose you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now. And the other thing was that um, your approach seemed to be different from the normal speech therapist. Mm -hmm. 
uh, speech therapists would try to make your current, you know, voice better. But you you have this new thing where you make a whole new voice. That that I found kind of nice, and I thought that that might be something that I'd be able to try, and hopefully it work. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it looks like it is working for you, uh, and and I think that you'll continue to move in that direction. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention that I wanted to highlight is you mentioned the fact of the delayed auditory feedback device, I believe it is. And there's another device called Speech Easy. I'm just going to name the names because they're out there. And some of my clients, a lot of them have actually bought these devices and used them. And they have worked for them for a period of time. And for most of them, then it stopped working. Now, I'm not saying that they don't work and that they'll stop working for everyone. I'm simply relaying what you and my other clients have said that they did work for a while and then they stopped working. One client said he had to keep doing the batteries and stuff like that and he didn't want to do that. So I just want people to be aware of when you buy these devices, generally what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to get something that's instant. You want, I, I want to fix it now and I want to have to really work hard. Let me just use a device. Yeah. And granted, it might work for a little while, or it might work forever, but you still have to rely on a device. There's a friend of mine, um, he's also a doctor, he works in the emergency room. He, he also stutters, and it was pretty severe. He tried that uh, delayed feedback device, and what he used to do was, you know, one day he would wear it the whole day, and then he would slowly cut down on the timing. Okay. And that really helped him, and now he doesn't have to wear it, so he's okay. But you know, if someone is going to try that, that is a quick fix. You know, it's not something that will last very long. Yeah. Well, I like what you said. The fact that he he kind of weaned himself off of it. He wore it, and then and so maybe he had a a good strategy for for utilizing it. So yeah, I think the devices. I think speech therapy can be effective for some people, especially for children. I think the other programs that are out on the market, some of them are very good, very solid, um, and can work for people as well. So I'm not slamming programs or devices. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. Well, let's look at how was your experience during the first few to several weeks when you started with me? Uh. Well, it's normally, whenever you try something new, it doesn't always work in the beginning. Um, it all depends how motivated you are to stick with it. It didn't work for me in the first maybe one month or so. I, I used to practice more than one and a half, two hours a day almost, and um, I just wasn't able to do well in conversations. Um, I slowly improved with my family. I used to get stuck a lot with them, and they, they used to have to constantly tell me, talk slower, talk slower, you know, speak slower. But now, you know, they don't have to say that stuff, and much more fluent with them. I mean, I got much more fluent with them. Um, yeah, I mean, it just took some time for it to work, uh, but it does work in the end. Yeah, but well, you mentioned some things that I try to highlight in every one of my interviews, I try to highlight them in the videos, and that is, yeah, you I mean, you worked hard. You worked an hour, hour and a half, right, every single day. I knew you were working because you would present, you know, the 21 Steps videos. So I knew you were doing it, and every time we met, you would say, ah, oh, I tried to use it today, and it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. And I just kept telling you, it's... It is going to work. It is working beneath the surface. You just have to keep doing it. And uh, finally, you slowly started to see some results, and then it just kept growing from there. But the thing you did is you stuck with it. You stuck with it, and you kept doing the practice, and I guess you trusted what I said, because if you didn't trust it, then you would have quit, or you would have slacked off, right? But you didn't slack off. You stuck with it, and because of the law of accumulation, everything you had done accumulated, and then you started to see results. Right. So, 
that's something that you did that's critically important, that's critically important that I want uh, the viewers and listeners to understand is you stuck with it, even though you used to tell me it's not working, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's important to uh, find that motivation to keep you going forward. Uh, if you don't have that, then it would be really, really hard. That's right. And we talked about that before, but what was your motivation? Or what was one of your motivators? Well, uh, last time I mentioned one, but um, actually I have a couple. Uh, one of them being, you know, the people that kind of doubted me. You know, uh, the people that said that I would have to go into intensive therapy and stuff like that. You know, I wanted to prove them wrong. Uh, the, uh, the other thing was my mom. You know, she, she always wanted to see me speak well. She's always encouraging me, and I think just you know just that just, just to have that support that uh, that helped a lot. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, the thing that I also wanted to mention is that this is a journey. It's a, it's a journey, and as you tell me all the time, there are situations where you're not where you want to be. Uh, you're not a hundred percent, and then there are other situations where. You were just telling me today you had to make phone calls and you were like, I was just about 100% in those phone calls. And then you had an interview where uh, you did better than you did before. I mean, obviously you were, if most people probably would have seen you, they would have thought that you were pretty fluent, but you weren't where you wanted to be. So this is an ongoing journey um, that will take some time, but within a few months, you've been able to go from wherever you were to performing at extremely high levels in most areas of your life that are important phone calls ordering food conversations interviews what do you think about that I agree uh, one thing is that you know, this is a journey and a habit that you've had for so many years is not easy to break very quickly uh, it takes a lot of hard work it, it takes a lot of practice. And it takes like the will to want to get better. Yeah, and you know sometimes we we think that it's like you said something that we can change or or break overnight. But if you've been doing it for even several years or decades, I mean a lot of people have been doing this for decades. It is something that's going to take time and hard work, yeah. but uh, but you can do it. I mean, yeah, you, can you can do. It. Yeah, you can. You can, and you'll generally start seeing the results in a few months um, if you work hard at it and if you expose yourself to those type of situations where you have to speak and you know, yeah. kind of speeds up things. That's the key. Okay, let me highlight that as well is you have to expose yourself. You expose yourself to your family. So you started using your new style with your family and it slowly started to work. And then you began to expose yourself to people at work and then you had to do interviews. And so you put yourself under pressure there. You are also looking into Toastmasters. So you're gonna, that's the key. If you don't try to use your new style all the time, it's simply not gonna work. Uh, there's something else that I wanted to say about this too, and that is that when you are attempting to use this new style, uh, you are going to find that under pressure, initially it's not going to work the way you had hoped that it would work. And that the key is to continue to put yourself under pressure. That's after you've done the training, after you've you know, gone through the process, then you really have to get out there and put yourself under pressure because that's the only way you're going to learn to use the new style under pressure. The other thing that might be worth adding is also um, whenever you do put yourself in those type of situations and you don't do as well, um, you should try to focus on the things that you have done. Like, like you always tell me, uh, sometimes we don't see what we're doing, but we did better than we have in the past. 
you should try to focus on the positive aspects rather than the negative aspects. That would that would change your whole mindset about this. Most likely speed up things too. Thank you for reminding me of that because our tendency is to focus on the negative, right? It's to focus on I had a conversation today and I messed up 90% of the time, right? So when you first get started, yeah, you might be, you might still mess up 90% of the time, but maybe you spoke well 10% of the time, right? So what we do is we teach you to focus on that 10%. The 90% was there already. It was 100% before 80 or 90, you know, whatever. That was already there. So we don't need to focus on that. We need to focus on the 1%, the 5%, the 10% where you spoke well because then you will begin to develop belief, confidence that you can do it, uh, encouragement. You won't be discouraged that, okay, I've been practicing every day and I still messed up. Hey, so, Michael, my mom is yeah. calling me. Let's okay. Come right back. Do you sure. want to pause this? Yes, we'll put it on pause. Okay, for those of you watching, we had to, to stop and we are starting back up with part two. And we'll be wrapping this interview up uh, pretty soon, but I'd like to thank Wakas for uh, taking the time to do this interview. And, and we'll be doing maybe maybe one more or two more to focus on a couple of things, maybe even to answer some of your questions, uh, questions that you might actually have for Wakas and not for me. So. Wakas, let's go ahead and talk now about um, some of the things that you that you've had to do during your your journey. Like you know, you can talk about um, some of the the amount of time you had to spend, some of the things you did in practice, without giving away all the secrets, <laughs> and then talk about how life is for you now. And we've kind of touched on some of those things, but we'll just view them real quick. Okay, so um, basically life right now for me, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm 100% I'm fluent with my family and my friends. Um, the, the place that I still have a little bit of trouble is in high pressure situations. Um, but I'm working on that and I've joined Toastmasters to help me with that. Um, and I'm I'm slowly improving. As I see, you know, how I was maybe when I was starting or even a few months into it, I mean, I've gotten a lot better. I think I'm going to continue to get better. Yeah. So I actually encourage people to do Toastmasters. It's a wonderful uh, organization, a wonderful tool and a resource to help take you to the next level. Um, and it's a great community. So I absolutely encourage people. After maybe their first six weeks or so of, of either working through the self-study or working with me, you know, definitely after the first six to eight weeks, then I encourage you to do Toastmasters because then you've developed um, a good foundation. So tell me some of the things that you had to do while you were working with me to improve your speech. Can't, um, I can't emphasize this enough. Practice is what helps you the most. Um, here we're trying to learn something new. So if you expect to do it for a couple days and for it to work, that's not how it works. It takes time, it takes a lot of hard work. You have to constantly be practicing. You know, there, there are certain things that you ask us to do and you have to be working on one of those things constantly. You know, there's probably four or five things that incorporate this new style and you know you you have to constantly be working on them constantly be trying to perfect them and once you get to a certain stage you'll see the results they they will show and people will even come up to you and tell you that you're a good speaker or that you speak very fluently or that you speak very smoothly you know this has happened to me so yeah yeah and it 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 changes life for you because you actually be start you you actually start to become more confident, and therefore you're able to and looking for uh, you're able to take on greater responsibilities. Other people begin to see you differently and treat yeah. you differently, and sometimes relationships don't change for the better because sometimes people are used to seeing you 
as being this coy or shy, shy you know, person. And now all of a sudden you're becoming more vocal. You're able to say what you like and what you don't like. So sometimes relationships can change for the worse, but it's always better for you. It's always going to be better for you to move forward. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So tell me, tell me some of the other things that you've had to do if, if you wanted to just leave some parting remarks with people um, and maybe you've already said it but what what would you tell people that they really need to do to make this this approach work for them okay um, well going into this uh, approach you have to keep in mind that you will constantly be telling yourself to quit you know you you'll feel that if it's you know if it's not working in the first few weeks that it's not going to work that's not the case um, it does take a little bit of time but it does work uh, it requires a lot of patience um, and some self-control as well um, but it does work and in the end I think they would be happy with their results yeah thank you thank you because if you think about it, 90 days, six months, a year, is really a short period of time to do something that's going to positively impact the rest of your life. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about impact emotionally or physically, but even financially. It's going to impact you financially as well as all those other areas for the rest of your life. So to invest, you know, 90 days... And you see a significant difference in 90 days. You're able to do a lot of stuff maybe you weren't able to do. And then you take that out another few months and a year, and your life is really different. It's worth the investment of time and money. Some people try to get everything for free. And I try to put a lot of stuff out there for free. But the fact is, for the coaching and for the Pro90D speech system, um, it does cost, but you get the results so that's, that, you know, benefits you for the rest of your life. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, thank you, Wakas. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I'm hoping that people will have some questions for you. Um, always I encourage people to be honest you know, about everything. I didn't ask you to say anything a certain way. Just tell the truth. And hopefully some people will have some questions that maybe we can answer in another interview. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Okay. All right.